How's it going, everybody? Rye right here today, and we are back with your Stanley Cup champion, Calgary Flames. And we are in the offseason after getting back-to-back -back Stanley Cup wins. And we got to keep this train rolling, right? You guys know that I'm not satisfied with where the team's currently at. Um, I, I still think we need to improve our defense. I'm hoping Mason Jackson takes that step. Maybe it's Owen Power to do that. Um, I doubt Boakvist is going to take that step. And Eric Carlson, we're probably going to let him walk just because... He already showed some signs of decline, and it's only going to accelerate next season if he doesn't go out on top lifting the Stanley Cup. But we are the Stanley Cup champions right there. I jumped in with this screen in the background just because I love it, guys. It's so much fun. Winning the Cup feels so good. And the Rochester Americans, I just saw them uh, over the weekend. Um, so we're happy to see them win the Calder. I I'd love it to be the Wranglers, but hey, you know, I got to do a better job of putting an AHL team in place that can win um, the Calder Cup. But there we go. There is the draft lottery. Not a lot of surprises. 2-1 to one for St. Louis, 1-2 to two for Dallas. Other than that, it is as it is. St. Louis with two top five picks. So, you know, that's a very, very interesting uh, team. I did not upgrade our concessions. I'm sorry, uh, owner. I am very, very sorry about that. But the retired players, anybody of note here? Um, plenty of guys of note. We'll sort by games played. Jeff Carter, Evgeny Malkin, Ryan O'Reilly, Jonathan Taze. Um, let's... Uh, let's see, Lars Eller, uh, Jordan Eberle, Jordan, uh, John Carlson, Adam Henrique, Backlund. Backlund does finally call it quits as a member of the Dallas Stars, so not sure how I feel about that. Taylor Hall, Brendan Dillon, Alex Kalorn, Spurgeon, Eric Johnson, Ryan McDonough, Savard, Orlov, Kulikov, Shattenkirk, Krug, Petrie, Tarasenko. Wow, look at all of these names. If you guys want to see uh, somebody that you guys, your favorite player, maybe retired this year, go ahead and pause and let me know who is your favorite player in the NHL, even if they are not retiring. I, I would say mine's J.J. Paterka probably followed by Rasmus Dahlin. Those are probably my two favorites. Uh, Bowen Byron was quickly going up there, but um, it, we got Marc-Andre Fleury, Cam Talbot, Brian Elliott, uh, Martin Jones, and then Phoenix Copley. Dustin Tokarski uh, also retiring. Lion only getting 39 games in this universe. I think he might have already gotten that for Detroit this season. Probably not 39, but he's played a good amount. Ryan O'Reilly is now a coach. I feel like that's fitting. I feel like if there's anybody that like is going to be a coach, it's... It's Ryan O'Reilly, right? It, feel, it just kind of fits. He's that kind of Mr. Fundamentals to me. Uh, but uh, Matias Kundratek and Wojtek Virbata, uh, both of the Calgary Wranglers, are going to retire. So we do need to make some coaching hires. Thankfully, I've been putting more and more money into our um, coaching budget. So we shouldn't be too concerned um, about that. So we'll take a look here. Upgrade and maintain. What needs to be up? Oh my God. We definitely need to, uh, owner goal requirement is to upgrade this. Yep. We'll upgrade the club seats again, get level four. We still have 2.5 million. Uh, let's upgrade the parking lot. Cause that'll be, you know, 700,000. Uh, we'll repair the team store. We will upgrade the concessions as well. Get us five star concessions. I would absolutely love that. And then insufficient funds for these, but we can tackle that uh, at the start of next season. I am liking owner mode, by the way. It is, it is pretty fun. If we take a look at our operations budget, um, uh, maybe it's because I'm a finance major, but I'm having fun with this. Uh, we'll put some of the extra money we got uh, there. Uh, scout salaries, we will increase. Advertising, we'll max that out because we got plenty. Oh, actually, we've got a lot of money. We might be able to put it all into arena operations here. Uh, let's up up the advertising budget, and then we'll, we will see if we can max out the arena operations. There we go. Uh, scout travel, obviously... They're they're good at the Best Western. They're good at the uh, Motel Six. There's plenty of those around, right? They can catch a bus. They could ride a bike. I mean, Europe's not that big, is it? Um, we've got to let's see. We've got probably the lower bowl. Want to repair that, and then we can probably repair one more. Let's repair uh, the executive suites here next. That's probably because it's probably just going to cost more, and we'll get a new budget next season. So. Pretty happy with how things have gone owner-wise, right? The owner likes us. Uh, amazing owner happiness. He's not willing to move, really. Um, I mean, owner happiness is about 99, 100, right? He's about as happy as it gets. I mean, we just want him back-to-back -back cups, so I really don't think he would complain about my my uh, lack of upgrading. But here we are at the NHL Entry Draft. Take a look at our draft board. Take a look at our picks and then assess what we want to do there. So we have two picks. They're both in the late first round, but we do have ammo to move up. Should there be somebody in the mid first round that we want uh, two seconds as well? Same thing, Florida and us. So 27 and 32 in the second round. Uh, and then we got the fifth pick in the third round, the 24th, and then ours in the 32nd. So uh, a lot of top 100 picks here. And you guys know, I love my top 100 picks outside of the top 100. I don't really see the use of those picks fourths, fifths sixths and sevenths. I see those as trade bait, as sweeteners for other teams. To me, 
I want third rounds or better. Really, that's what I want. So let's take a look at the draft class. I almost jumped straight into it there. Um, there is an unknown Kent Law. He could be a franchise. He could not be. But uh, it looks like we know pretty much everything about the top six, and they're going to be elite. Um, anybody here that we have uncovered, uh, Bryant Dollywall is two years away. That's actually not too bad. Um, it's saying, oh, three bar, a medium elite Omar Brennan. He's potentially two years away as well. So let's go ahead and sorry. I think my light is flickering. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Uh, there is a goalie here at 160. That is high elite, two bar high elite. Don't know if that's actually going to be the case. Uh, another goalie here. That's three bar medium elite at pick 146. Absolutely. Get on the draft board. Um, Bunch of two bar medium elites here. Do we have any like medium top sixes that are like bona fide? Or how about a defenseman prospect? Couple low elites here. There we go. Uh, Saborin, okay, is three years away. Plays like Paul Coffey as a defensive defenseman. Interesting to see how that works. And then Essus uh, Sepinen uh, there at pick 224. That is absolutely one that I want to maybe trade down and acquire. Maybe acquire a seventh uh, to go get that guy. The rest of these top sixes, okay, UC Vertanen. Uh, one year away for Vesa, uh, me, uh, 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 it, it potentially I mean, exactly one year away, medium top six, two way forward and could have an X factor ability. So that is absolutely somebody I would like to target. There's 12 here for Ronnie Finley. Who's one year away as a, uh, what is a playmaker? A really good looking playmaker, but I love, I, I love me in here. Uh, the perfect kind of player that we can stand pat at our pick here at 32 and draft at, at pick 35. Uh, UC Verton in here uh, could be another one if we decide to stay with most of our picks, which I think we will. Uh, Ludwig Lindberg here uh, at 22 is not worth it. I was going to say could be an interesting get, uh, but here we go. Uh, Andre Roosevelt, five years away, defensive defenseman, doesn't really fit the scheme either. Uh, so not somebody I'm, I'm all overly interested in, but there's probably not going to be a lot of moving around in this draft class. Maybe I'll see if somebody wants to snag Florida's pick from us for something, right? Maybe we trade back. Maybe we trade it for a defenseman. Um, we'll see who's out there, but let's go ahead and jump into it. I mean, does anybody want to give up their pick here at the top? It does not look like it. Okay, Buffalo wants to give up their pick at seven, but that's okay. Uh, I don't think I want their pick at seven. Uh, there's nobody I'm really targeting. No trades, really? Okay, what about a first and a second? Is and How about a third? What? That's kind of crazy. Why is our first round pick so valuable next year? Two first. Nobody really wants anything for two first. That is kind of crazy. Uh, rookie goalies. Obviously, Jerry Corso, guys. We are very excited for his his his, his ascension. And then rookie skaters. Uh, is there anybody here that I'd like to get rid of Ferguson? Does anybody want Ferguson or Fallon? Uh, Fallon could be another get. Could be another sweetener. Uh, Francisco McCarron at 77 at 20. I mean, listen. I'm not going to count him out yet because he looks really well-rounded, like a really, really solid two-way defenseman, but I'd like one of these guys to develop for us. Maybe I need to hire a defensive coach. Like, I may pro that's probably what I'll do. We had two coaches retire. I think that's a good idea. And as far as um, potentially expiring contracts, we've got Kuzmenko and Lindholm both expiring after this upcoming season, so we probably want to think about replacements for them because Lindholm's going to be 34, 35 at the end of that contract, and Kuzmenko will be 34. These two guys are definitely guys that we're going to have to replace. Huberto, four years left, three years uh, three years left at thir uh, 35 years old. Not great. He may retire before that's done. Same thing with Mangiapane. It's probably time to start looking for the next wave. So drafting more and more players is probably where we're want going to want to be at, right? No longer do can we just throw away picks because we got a young core who's in their prime. Right now, I'd say we have to really establish a next generation uh, for our team. But unfortunately, I can't believe that pick 27 is garnering no intrigue. Um, I could probably make a trade happen, but <sighs> all right. What do we want to do here is the question. Do we, I don't want to move up and get one of these Tony Kemp um, from baseball now to hockey. Uh, Muhammad Berard plays like Patty Kane. That's crazy. Uh, and then Dwayne Lowe plays like Timu Solane. Um, Lewis Dryden, we don't really know too much about, but that's, that's not an NHL ready player. Uh, these couple guys, they are NHL ready, but they're the fact that they don't fit the scheme, dump balance block, block it's just not good. Uh, Brady Cowan here is three years away. These guys are all three years away. You guys know, I love my guys that are one year away. Like, uh, Wakabayashi here. Oh my God. Oh my word. What a name. He's got all alone. The X factor two as a playmaker. You want to talk about next wave one year away, dump, balance, balance, block, 
to move up to 10, I don't, I mean, is it worth it just for the name? Um, oh my God, that is a fantastic name, but the scheme is balance, balance, block, balance, 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 block. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just like these guys don't fit schemes. Like, I don't know why they generate with such terrible scheme fits. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, there's a guy that plays like Zidane Chara. Oh my goodness. Uh, and then K uh, Kent Law, 83 overall sniper. Great shooting category. Um, really love to see that for him. Let's let's go back to viewing the draft class. Uh, I, I mean, I could move up for Wakabayashi. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's a fantastic name. I, I was complaining, like, why don't I get guys like that? There is a medium elite here in Omar Brennan at pick 23. He's not exact medium elite, so we could be just trading up for a medium top six. But again, that is not the end of the world for him to be a medium top six. Uh, three bar medium elite here. Uh, our, I think our pick is at 27, right? Because there, there's Ludwig Lindbergh here, who's three years away. Potentially two years away with balance shoot, balance, balance behind the net. Well, it does look like it's going to take him a little while to get to the NHL level. There is a goalie projected to go in the first round, but I'm not going to take a goalie at this point. I'm, I'm le By the way, I'm letting the scouts auto-scout. Um, we're at that point where I felt like we could uh, just let them do their jobs. Uh, and then here, Reed Sauerbrunn. The low elite guy, I think I'd rather take Vesa Mietinen. So I think maybe I'll move up to 22, uh, and I'll just take a shot on, on Omar Brennan here. Three bar medium elite, probably will be top six. Uh, six foot two playmaker. I mean, maybe not a playmaker, could be a power forward too. Uh, but let's go ahead and see who is at pick 21, 22. Do they want to give up their pick? Um, the Leafs, the Toronto Maple Leafs, that's actually a good target for us to trade with, uh, because they are as far away from our division as possible, uh, geographically, and, uh, we would be over the league maximum salary cap, there it is, we have too much money on the books, Eric Carlson, I'll send Eric Carlson, um, really, I I'm surprised, I mean, he's technically against our cap space right now, um, but I, I'm going to do this trade. That's probably why none of the trades would pop through. Let's see if we can get maybe a, a late pick here from Toronto. Maybe a fifth, 150. That should be enough to get that player that I was targeting. Trade rejected. We've done all right. Let's move that third down. Pick number 96. We'll move that down. Uh, trade rejected. It's a bit low for them. So let's go ahead and add in a next year's. Oh God, two years from now. No, let's, let's give them a skater that matches their block. Uh, another one. Let's go with uh, Mercier. Mercier, sixty-seven and nineteen sniper. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to sweat moving on there. Trade accepted. Beautiful. Uh, as much as it sucks to get rid of Eric Carlson, um, I I think that trade's fine. It also gives us flexibility because apparently we were over the salary cap with him on the roster. So now I'm sure if I go to find a trade uh, for our pick. Uh, pick 22. There are going to be offers. There's actually some decent offers. Brock Nelson, a third and a fifth. Liliagrin, Edmondson, and a third. Uh, Fairview, Yoki Haru. Like, wow, the Minnesota Wild really want that pick. Um, but that's okay. I am going to stick with that pick. We are going to take um, our guy. Sending to pick number 22. Uh, Holmberg, friggin... Uh, yeah, we should be fine. Where is Wakabayashi? How good is Wakabayashi? He's a 75 medium top six with all alone... That's a good player right there. That is a very, very good player. But going up to 11 was something I don't think we could have afforded. Popovich, that's that's tough for the uh, Ottawa Senators. Uh, Petrangelo, that's also tough. But Kennis, okay, so pick eight, medium elite. Kennis, uh, defensive defenseman, that's that's a very good pick, I'd say. I mean, if I'm not going to get one of these guys that are medium top six and a couple of years away, um, I definitely want the medium elite that's, that's a couple more years away because at least they're good trade bait. But a five foot nine center, you know, obviously I'm not going to complain too much about size, um, but we do have some large, large players. So maybe a small guy wouldn't be the end of the world. But Omar Brennan here um, from the Medicine Hat Tigers put up uh, 20 goals. So maybe he is a goal scorer, especially with that shooting category potentially being an A, physical being a B minus. I'll take the shot on him, right? Potentially two years away. I think it's worth, I think it's worth it. Uh, we didn't really give up too much. We just kind of flopped flip-flop picks um gave him the rights to eric carlson too so it actually did us a favor and he's a 64 medium top six no x factors uh but he is a two-way forward so really solid all-around player here somebody that can easily uh step up uh, to the plate um whatever we need him to do um so I i'm fine with that pick there in the first round let's go to pick number 32 owen 
gets taken. Pete Owen, the low elite player. Uh, Sarah uh, Sovereign. Yeah, there's a couple low elites. It looks like there's actually a decent amount of low elites. Houston, they do. Wow, so the trade works out for Toronto there. They get a medium elite goalie. I'd say that's a pretty good trade for them. I'm happy uh, with Omar Brennan Lindbergh here. A power forward with a good shot, but just... I don't know. I feel like... Uh, oh, God. Uh, nope. Where is he? Uh, oh, well. I lost him. Uh, I feel like we we did get the better player with the two-way forward. And then Mietan in here. One year away. Two-way forward. Plays like Owen Nolan. I'll absolutely take that. Could have an X-Factor ability. Let's go ahead and take the pick. Let's go back and figure out what the heck what we're doing with our pick. Uh, it is a 73. Wow. He is a 73 Mietan in. 73 medium top six. That is a really, really good pick. Another two-way forward. More NHL ready. So back-to-back two-way forwards. Brennan and Miettinen in the first round. Both left wingers. Both two-way forwards. And they're, that's part that's going to help us establish that next core. Dolman and Sepinen uh, are the two players still on our draft board. So let's go ahead and sort by pinned uh, just to remind ourselves where they're picked. 146 and 224. So we'll have to take them at the end of the third round and at, at the fifth round pick there. Other than that, um, our picks should be coming up in a little bit. The question is, do we want Luton in? No, he's four years away. Torres is three years away. Um, nobody here is screaming, come get me. Uh, Petrov, Dmitry Petrov, four years away, three years away for Peter Bebko. But that doesn't really mean too much. Three years away can really be anything. Uh, two bar medium elite, uh, Joaquin Scrivens. Uh, four years away, that could be a decent player. That really, that really could be. Uh, there's Kari Kako here, three years away, low elite. There's Brandon Posma, the medium elite goalie. Couple low elites here. Uh, two bar low top six. I mean, none of these guys really are, like I said, screaming, come and get me. Uh, Maddie Karanen could have, oh, Maddie Karanen, uh, might be a good player for us to go ahead and take there. A defensive defenseman with some potential X factors. So I will... Definitely be looking to take him there. Our next pick, though, is at pick 59. So he'll probably be the next pick anyway. So we'll take him here at pick 59 in the second round. Kako is low top six. Anybody else that we potentially looked at that was elite or or I'd be upset about missing out on? Pedersen, not necessarily. Nemi Holloway, it's a good pick from the Buffalo Sabres. That is a bounce back pick. Loom is a, it's a pretty good pick for them as well. And I'd say Byron, that's actually a really good pick there from... Uh, Lee Byron. So a lot of uh, medium top sixes, medium top fours here at the late first, early second range. Uh, but I definitely think I want to take uh, Matty Kiernan. The goalie postma two bar medium elite. I'm not willing to do it because we have Jerry Corso. I I'm not really feeling it. I am going to go with Matty Kiernan, a right handed defenseman with some potential X factors. <coughs> and it is a low top four. Okay, so he's a low top four pick there. Not the best, but um, we still have a couple opportunities. I guess we could have taken the goalie, and I maybe could have taken him next, but I'm not all that concerned about it. I'm happy with the guy we got. Medium uh, medium elite. Ooh, uh, three years away. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Uh, Andre Roosevelt here. Five years away. Medium top four defenseman, though. That's, that's tough. Do I want the guaranteed trade value? Postma was only a medium starter, so I'm glad I didn't end up taking him. That actually feels pretty good. Let's see if we can find a trade for this second round pick. Would somebody give me something decent for this second? Um, because I'm not exactly keen on having Vejmelka. I don't need a goalie. Will Borgen, don't need defenseman. Klim Kostin, no thanks. Fisher, a third next year. So we just, I mean, that's that's not really getting value, right? You're asking me to give away Laferriere. Oh my God. I, keep, I, I get fooled by him every time he pops up on the trade block. Um, Labushkin, a third and a fifth. No, I mean, of two fourths. I'd really, really like to get something of equal value back and I and not just some of the parts kind of thing. Okay. Doesn't look like there's anybody will, willing to offer me something worth my time for that pick. So we are just going to take the pick here. Um, there is Pekka Kontanen, uh, two bar low elite. I mean, I, the scouts want me to take him. A defensive defenseman who's potentially three years away, but does fit the scheme. Caleb Habashid, though, the two bar medium elite. Or there's the, you know, I'm going to take the guaranteed trade value here in Andre Rosaval. Um, 17 years of age. Uh, let's see. I, I got to actually see what his uh, what his overall is. It's going to be a 52. Not the greatest, right? Obviously not our, our, our best player by a long stretch. But 
at the end of the day, it's certainly not going to hurt us. An incoming trade off for Dylan DeMello and a third. It's the rights to DeMello, too, and just bumping our third to next year. That's okay. Um, our pinned players should be coming up on the board very shortly, right? Uh, I, I was worried for a second they wouldn't be there. A 146 and 224. So we just, just make sure. 146 and 224. Uh, we'll go ahead and draft picks. Yeah. So next pick and the following pick. So this is really our last pick to do something interesting with, right? We know our next two picks for sure. But this one is the only unknown. Speaking of unknown, we got a couple unknowns. Our scouts need to do a little bit better next time, boys. Um, five years away, three years away for this defenseman. Brady Hextall at 17, potentially three years away. Like that a lot. Uh, these guys, though, are three years away at low top six. I'm not as as keen on everybody else then. Brust, uh, three years away for Kip Gore. Uh, potentially A shooting. Not a grinder then. Uh, not in any stretch of a grinder. Let's see what we would get for this pick. Find a trade. Um, oh, yeah, you know what? Let me see if I could find a trade for this third. And then skaters. Uh, no, not skaters. Imagine the block. It's rookie skaters. Uh, they just happen to generally fit the trade block Ferguson and Fallon Fallon Ferguson uh okay how about how about just for the third uh just for this pick would somebody yes they would they would give me a fourth and a sixth Blomqvist in a sixth a fourth and a fifth ne nope I I'm not I'm not give me next year's pick thank you a fourth and a fifth next year might be worth it for me uh because right now none of these none, none of this I mean a third next year and then a sixth this year I think I feel like I still get a third next year, and I get an extra pick this year to do something with. Um, a third this year, so it would be just moving down, which actually isn't the end of the world. But uh, a third next year and a sixth. Yeah, a third and a sixth seems to be like the move here uh, for what teams are willing to offer for our pick. Uh, quite a few teams actually want this pick. So I'm just going to have to see if somebody's offering something crazy. The Sabres, third round pick in the Coyotes, sixth. Uh, Brandstrom? That's the rights to Brandstrom, though. Uh, hmm, he's, I, yeah, no, I, I don't think, listen, if they're offering him for a late third, something tells me he's not going to be the answer to my decor problem. Uh, but we are going to talk to the Islanders and take the Sabres third round pick from next year because the Sabres, uh, we're not looking very good. So they are at seven. They wanted, they, they're, they're just kind of struggling right now. They're floundering. So we're going to accept this trade there. Um, I do wonder if, Somebody's going to give me anything for Ferguson? No. Does anybody even want Ferguson or Fallon? It doesn't seem to be. Uh, okay. So if, if I just... Uh, you know what? I'm going to see if I can find a trade for either of those guys. If I don't find something, I'll let you know. But um, somebody's got to want a low elite prospect, right? No? Literally nobody wants these guys? Okay. Washington, you're going to be the honorary members that I look to... Um, snag something from. So how about a next year's third from Columbus for Ferguson? That actually looks like good value. Um, uh, let's let's see if I can throw in a fifth from Vegas. A third and a fifth next year for Ferguson. Trade rejected. It's probably not going to... I'll probably just get a third. And, and listen, if I get a third for these guys, we'll get our seventh back. Dang it. Uh, trade rejected quite far off. A third. Trade accepted. All right. So we can move on those from those guys for a third next year. I'm absolutely fine with that. Jackson Fallon, uh, 1967, low elite. <sighs> Listen, I don't think him... I, he gets one more shot. He gets one more shot. Um, really, he does. Uh, but, you know, for uh, for Washington there, I'm just going to say whatever. Uh, and let's see, low elite, yeah. Ferguson was 20 at 68. If, if, if Jackson Fallon doesn't grow any more in the offseason, then I may move on from him, but... Here at pick 88, we do have some extra picks now. So I do want to make sure that I am I'm maximizing our value. Um, draft picks. We've got 150 and 175. Uh, I think that should be enough for our draft board. 150 and 175. 146. Ah, shoot. 146 and 224. Um, so we could just make the pick now, trade the next one. But I might be able to see if I can find a trade uh, for this pick and move and move down from this slot. So a four, we get a fourth and Weidman. See, these are the things that I don't want those guys. I don't don't really want what I'm being offered right now. Um, I don't want Adam Larson and next year's third. No, I want to move down and pick up something decent. Um, Jeff Skinner uh, is not exactly what I would consider uh, to be decent for this pick. But like medium bottom sixes, a fifth round pick and the rights to Emil Brandstrom. Actually, that's not the end of the world. Let's see what Brandstrom is. Uh, in just a second, a third next year, that could be decent, but we move down and get his uh, the, the rights. I, I like that idea. 
a lot. Braden Shen, no, thank you. Uh, Kaken, yeah, so we're back at the beginning. So let's go see what the Ottawa Senators are cooking up here with Emil Brandstrom and his rights. Uh, Brandstrom here is an 81 offensive defenseman. He's better than that. He's he's just miserable because of his... Uh, he fits the top four. He's Yeah, he's miserable because of his... Uh, Morale, for sure. He's not. This is not what an 81 overall defenseman looks like. Looks like a pretty good defenseman, to be honest. Taking a look at our decor, though. Uh, it's Mason Jackson, Owen Power, Boakfist, Hannafin, Baron Brzgalov, and then hopefully Francisco McCarron steps up. You know what? I'm going to put my faith in Brzgalov and McCarron that, 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 that these guys actually take a leap next season. As a two-way defender, he doesn't even look that bad. Um, but Emil Brandstrom would basically just block the path. Um, he's not going to grow. He's going to ask for more money. He's another left-handed defenseman. I am going to say no to this deal, and I'm just going to take a pick. We're going to see if we can just get somebody decent with this pick. You know, I'm not looking for a superstar. I'm not looking for the best player possible, but somebody that's going to be here in a couple of years, right? Not somebody... I doubt I'm going to find it. Yeah, not a project player, right? UC Vertinen. There we go. Perfect. That is exactly the guy I was looking for. Beautiful. All right. It has 64 overall center sniper. There's part of the next core, boys. Um, let's see. Oh, I'd probably shoot. I was supposed to go to 146 here, wasn't I? Offer a trade. Yeah, it's like 146, so I'm probably going to have to move some, some, some picks. Yeah, we're going to have to move up a couple picks here. I mean, these teams want them. Um, 95 is the best they have. They're 146. No, we'll go with 114. We'll see if we can get it straight up. Trade rejected quite far off. I kind of figured that. Uh, goalies. How many goalies do we have in the system? We have a fringe starter here, 57. Would you guys like that? Of course they would. Um, beautiful. So we move up. We're going to be able to get our guy. We get a replacement goalie too. So pick 114. Here we come. Fourth round. Let's go look at our pinned players. It's going to be, first of all, the goaltender and then Seppinen. So three bar medium lead. Hector Dahlman with potentially an X factor. This would be insane. That would be an insane get here in the fourth round. And he is a medium elite. Does he have X factors? No, he doesn't. But he's a medium elite at 19. That is a huge, huge get right there. Pick 175. I believe Sepinen is projected to go. Ah, it doesn't show me where he's projected to go. Uh, I got to go to the draft board. Yeah, 224. Okay, 224 he's projected to go. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and sim to our next. But that is a great snag. Guys, this draft has been really solid. I'm very, very happy. Uh, with this draft so far. And then the exact low elite 18-year-old, too. That's big because I know the goalie was 19. But Seppin in his 50, the low elite, boys. We are able. Uh, we, we we absolutely beautiful. We we I think that's a great, great draft class. I mean, that's a lot of players, right? That's a lot of picks. And none of them are all that bad. Just the low top four, Kurinen. Uh, but Brennan and Mietinen are both medium top six power forwards. We got Roosevelt, the medium top four defenseman. Uh, Vertinen is a medium top six, couple years away, right? Dolman, a medium elite goaltender, and a low elite Sepinen. So we get some real, you know, potential studs later on, but solid dudes early on. So now we have to do the resign phase. I don't think we have anybody uh, too crucial to resign. We do. I think. I think our coaches should be fine. Okay, NHL goalie coach and AHL head coach need to be resigned, uh, and we have a scout. Philip Sexton, and then, yes, yeah, so we don't really have many restricted free agents uh, coming up, but we'll take a look at who is expiring and how much cap space we have. So all expiring contracts are Crawl, Bjork, Farinacci. It is literally all the AHL boys. Um, no, but no goalies expiring. So this will be easy for me. I'll take care of this. I'll make sure we're all set. And I'll catch up with you guys in free agency. So we're now up to free agency, and I forgot to unpause my recording so I did offer out a couple contracts to our expiring uh, contract guys. Uh, Lakaramaki, I'm giving him, or at least trying to, eight years at five and a half million dollars. He, to me, feels like the replacement for Andre Kuzmenko. I mean, just take a look at, let's take a look at these two guys. They don't feel that far apart. I mean, yes, the defensive awareness from Kuzmenko and the X-Factors are fantastic, uh, but I feel like we can get Lakaramaki to to be what uh kuzmenko is if we just give him the ice time uh and he fits the first line perfectly that's that's where it's exciting to me um peltier and ruzishka they're asking for like 1.1 1.2 so i gave them each a contract uh and then brizgalov i think i gave him two years i'll still be an rfa at like 1.25 um he'll be the perfect depth defenseman if he doesn't end up growing his 
it didn't really seem like he uh, was going to grow all that much either. Jerry Corso, I gave him two years as well, simply because uh, Spencer Knight um, is also going to expire around that time. We can make the decision what to do with Spencer Knight uh, and, and Jerry Corso when, you know, we see what's up. But he'll be an RFA at the end of that one. Jerry Corso will. We might be able to move on from Spencer Knight then as well. So apologies that I, I didn't show you guys that because I forgot to hit resume recording because I just wanted to take care of the coaches and whatnot, which I have. Uh, I have offered out coaches um, and a scout. We'll see if they respond. I think I may have to increase my operations budget just a little bit uh, for our coaching budget. I don't think I can, but hey, um, we'll see. Save budget. Let's hope. Let's hope because I'm putting a lot of money into our coaching, but I think coaching matters a ton. Obviously having elite talent, but coaching matters a bunch. So take a look at the free agents available. There was really nobody that caught my eye. I mean, obviously guys like Brady Kachuk and Dubé and Brodeen, like they're good players, but nobody that I have to go out and give a contract to. Like last year, we said that with, uh, with, we said that with Eric Carlson, right? Uh, Brady Kachuk. I mean, we can't even afford him this year. We only have 6.7 this year. Next season, we have 25. Obviously, it'll be around 20-ish um, when we hopefully sign Likaramaki and the couple depth players. So we'll maybe be under 20 just by a little bit. Uh, but we'll still have in the high teens as far as cap space, which puts us in a really good position to replace guys like Lindholm and replace guys like Kuzmenko and Mangiapane. One of them could even come back for a year or two. Uh, but if we take a look at the expiring contracts, I mean, Lindholm is going to want nine and a half million for one year, two years. That is a lot. I, I, it, he'd be worth it. He'd probably be worth it more than Kuzmenko just because of the, his role on the team as a two-way forward. Um, a playmate, I say a two-way forward. He is a two-way forward. He is a playmaker, but come on, guys. Look at that defensive category. That is disgustingly good. Uh, and he wins face-offs at 86 face-offs. I mean, he is so, so good. We'll see. have to see... Keep an eye out for any drop-off. Mangiapane's contract, what is he going to want? He wants 4.75 for another year. I mean, 5 million, he might be one to stick around, but he also doesn't feel like the most crucial of them. Baron, um, he did not impress me, so we'll give him another chance potentially, but he may get overlooked depending on the growth of Francisco McCarron. Um, I, I think I'm very happy with how things are going, guys. Um, just, yeah, I feel bad that, like, my, the Lekaramaki thing, very excited to see what he could do on the first line with Zykov and, and Thompson. I think they could light the lamp a ton. I mean, that is a bunch of goal scorers on the first line. Uh, getting a plus five for sure um, because he fits perfectly the scheme. And the other two have plenty of X factors. Then we can do Lindholm, Kuzmenko, and Huberto. Really like that as a second line. And then we've got Zari, Mangiapane, and Paterka. We've seen this team before, right? Doesn't look like we're going to be able to solve our defensive issue, but it may be one of those. We see how the team looks. We see the growth. Do we need to, right? Does does Owen Power take that next step? Does does uh, Mason Jackson take that next step? We'll have to see. But for now, we're going to advance a couple days. See the coach's response. Uh, okay, cool. Brendan Dixon is going to join us as an AHL um, head coach. Uh, that's great because he, he's got really good teaching um, and he's a B minus, right? He's really good all around, but he's a really good teacher. He's a balanced style, right? Uh, B minus teaching, B, B, A minus on the power play, B minus coach influence. So hopefully grows the guy, uh, the, the, the coaches below him. Uh, another day goes by. Don't feel okay. Helena Skir uh, Skirbeck does not want to join um, Dominic Hayduke does though uh he looks forward to making an impact i'm very happy about that so we need to just find an nhl assist ahl assistant coach uh and we should be good with our coaches there so uh we i think the scouts i yeah philip sexton i fired him brought him back uh we don't have a goalie coach i guess oh i guess we needed a goalie coach um yeah this guy's specialty is generalist i kind of want to fire him is it gonna cost us cost us zero dollars to fire him we have how much left uh, we'll have, yeah, we have 600,000. Okay. Let's let me, let me go find, uh, see if there's an assistant coach out there. That's better. Uh, AHL assistant coach. Um, generally these guys, it's tough to weed through all of the goalie coaches to find good teaching coaches. Cause that's, that's really what I want. A couple generalists here in the B minus range. Yeah. They want 300,000, um, B minus here. He wants so here's 400,000. Would improve the quality of the coaching staff. 
Um, but again, 450,000, we have the money to do this. We could just demote our other guy to the goalie coach. Uh, but as far as like goalie coaches are concerned, I could easily hire somebody for 200,000 less. I mean, it's not that, I mean, it is worse. Let's, let's be real. It is worse, but 150,000 is really nothing. Uh, when you think about it here, coach influence of a D a, a goalie coach. Uh, if I offer him a contract, it'd be 160. So we'd still have like 200 and some thousand. Yeah. I think we're going to stick with what we got for another year so I can keep pushing more money into the coaching budget. Um, but yeah, we do need the goalie coach, but other than that, that's, that's coaching and scouting done. So I'm very, very happy with our coaching staff. Obviously the NHL staff. Can I, can you extend coaches? Can I give our head coach an extension now? Uh, he's got three years left. How about fur talk? No, mm, cannot give fur talk an extension. Um, but Hey, listen, we got the a AHL head coach. Very happy with that one can easily become the, uh, uh, assistant coach or associate coach should these two decide to move on. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of making the AHL staff now that we've gotten to the promised land in the NHL and we've got a staff and a team. I'm now starting to refocus back on the development of, of our players, of our young drafted guys. So, um, another day we should see the answer on some of these contracts. Ruzishka, beautiful. Peltier, beautiful. Lakaramaki, beautiful. Jerry Corso, beautiful. Oleg Brizgalov, beautiful. So, there it is, guys. You saw that we are going to lock up Lakaramaki, the big, big free agent, uh, the not free agent signing, the off season signing, uh, of, of Lakaramaki. He, he's grown to an 84, five and a half million for eight more years. He's right there with Zykov. Those two can go hand in hand for us. I'm, and I'm very excited for it. Plus, if we take a look at Lindholm, we still have 19.9 million. So we could easily fit in Lindholm for 9 million. And have 10 million to go, right? We'd have 10 million left to spend. Could bring back Kuzmenko and just kind of hope that one of our young guys replaces Mangiapane. But a guy like Bortolo, um, you know, at 26, Thomas Bortolo was drafted by the Sharks in the second round a few years ago. He's a decent depth option. I don't love it. Siona, I did like Siona's play. Defensively, not the greatest. Uh, was what? A minus three during the regular season, but in the playoffs was a plus one. Did get four points, so... Can't really complain there. Uh, giveaways to takeaways was pretty much even. Good takeaway ratio there. So, again, a fine uh, fourth liner. Fourth liners, we'll, we'll be able to find those. There's always those 80-something overalls on a two-way deal. Um, so, we'll go to free agency here. Um, take a look at two-way deals, two-way deals. Uh, and sort by overall. Yeah, look, at we've got Jamson here. 25 900,000 for a year. Atu Jamson, a playmaker. Like, that's actually... He's actually pretty decent. We'll, we'll sign him for the AHL. Uh, give him three years. Beautiful. Uh, 900,000. Can I... Yeah, 9, 925. Uh, two-way deal. Perfect. Rasmus uh, Asplund here, too. Um, really good two-way forward. Solid defense. I do need to sign a couple... Uh, yeah, you know, we're going to actually do this. We're going to sign a couple of these guys for a couple of years. Just because I do need a bit more in the way of talent... Um, for the AHL squad, uh, Olsen here, Anton Olsen. That's actually not a bad player to go after 25 years old as well on a two way deal. We'll give him three years. He's, I mean, this is another good player. This will help us stack the AHL team, uh, with enough talent. Uh, Jared Anderson, Dolan, Chris Tierney, Chris Tierney looks really good. Actually at 34, a little bit of a veteran. We'll give him one year, 850,000. And these are just AHL signings, right? Um, and I'm, I'm very happy with, with that. So after that, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what the lines look like, any development that's happened. Really nothing crazy to report, I don't think. This is another one of those off-season where we're still... We now have to reshift our focus to the future. We've, we're have we we're starting to get some of the guys age out and their contracts are expiring. And we need to be mindful that we just can't spend money willy-nilly. All right, it is that time of year yet again to see what the owner has set for us. I wish I could see how long is left on my contract, to be honest. Um, obviously, okay, so sellouts, chemistry to 78, which I feel like should be at like 88 at this point. I mean, the majority of the core has been here for two years and we won two cups. Pretty hard to see how there might be any kind of infighting. But anyway, uh, we need to beat the Oilers in our first regular season meeting again and upgrade the parking lot uh, by one level, so... Uh, I feel like that's all achievable. Uh, and here we go. It's time to set the cap. Let's just, who is the captain? Uh, it is Captain Huberto with Lindholm and Zykov being the alternates. I'm, I guess I'm fine with that. Um, maybe Hannafin over Zykov, but at this point, I'm not messing with it. 
Uh, let's take a look at the lines and just see what we're looking at. And all right, whoo, our whoo. Paterka's now got an X factor. Paterka now has Yoink. Things you love to see. Uh, and then Lekaramaki is now up to an 85. Um, plus three. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, plus five. Wow, okay. Lekaramaki doesn't get a plus five on the top line like I had expected. He gets a plus three with Lindholm and, and Huberto. Plus four, okay. So this line does get us a plus four. Uh, we get a plus four up here if we take Zykov off of it and leave Kuzmenko there. Um, but a plus two, yeah, I don't like seeing the plus two. The plus five on the second line is kind of crazy, though. Uh, and to get Lekaramaki up with these guys, again, I'd like to see his awareness go up, but he is just a stud shooting the puck. Speaking of a stud, Dmitry Zykov, really, he did get that puck skills where we needed it to be. Uh, Paterka with Mangiapani and Zari, and then Peltier down to a 76. Really surprised. I mean, he's just upset uh, morale-wise. Otto Jansen. I mean, you guys saw me just sign this guy for no reason. I, he actually looks really good. Defensively, power, uh, Boakvist. Uh, let's go with uh, Boakvist, not Baron, but Hannafin here. Ah, uh, not again. Uh, a plus one with Bo... <sighs> Our defense, they just aren't really fitting. Anton Olsen. Oh, man. I guess Brizgalov doesn't look too hot then if he's not above a 79. That's really disappointing. Defenseman-wise, I mean, Olsen was here for the AHL. Cancel. Uh, and then in the system was Brizgalov, Crawl. None of them are growing. Seriously? That is honestly shocking to me. Uh, Brizgalov, I will call him up, though. Uh, he played last season. He was fine. Uh, goaltenders, how are we looking there? Spencer Knight, Vladar went up by a point. Jerry Corso is now a 79, and St. Hilaire is a 76. So I'm actually very happy with that. Uh, but forwards in the system, Siona, Schwint, I mean, uh, Peltier, Peltier, might, I might need to send this guy straight down, like, I just extended him, but like, he's just miserable, I feel like I gotta trade him at this point, I feel like he's just not gonna bounce back, he's listed as a depth forward, I'm just gonna get rid of him, I feel like, but I'm actually kind of surprised to see what we're gonna do here, um, with the uh, forward core, because I thought for sure Lekaramaki fitting perfectly would get us the plus five. Um, I guess it doesn't, and there's not enough X factors up here to make it work. Paterka up there would still only get a plus two. Wow, okay. Uh, if he replaces Kuzmenko, if he replaces him, oh, Kuzmenko, you know what? It's probably because he's got X factors and fits. I mean, Lakaramaki doesn't. I mean, I, I kind of want to give it a try, though. I guess maybe put him over Paterka. Uh, Paterka, wow, he's got great puck skills. The defensive category is really getting there, too. But a plus four for Lakaramaki. I mean, plus five, plus four. Do we just kind of roll with this again? Um, I really need your guys' take on this one. I think I, I, I want to try Lakaramaki up here. Right, getting a plus five on the second line is going to be crazy. A plus two is still great because that's 94, 93, 87. Uh, no doubt about that one. Uh, Tate Thompson does have one T, so I think I'm going to put him over there. Uh, but Huberto, Lindholm, Kuzmenko is a plus five, which is crazy. Mangiapane, Zari, Paterka is better than most teams' second line. And then, obviously, if I just remove Peltier for uh, Bordalo? Bordalo or Tierney? Uh, Chris Tierney. 77 faceoff doesn't look too bad. Bordalo honestly looks a little bit better. So... Ruzishka here, 79 versus the 81. Bordalo can play center for sure. And then defense, we will put in... A Baron did grow a point, so that's nice to see. Left defense, Brizgalov, substitute in all lines. Does get a minus one there with Baron. It's interesting. I feel like I need to make another move on the blue line here. Power. Oh, I don't want to get rid of Owen Power. I thought he was decent when he came in. He was didn't play all that great and doesn't really fit. Maybe he's somebody we look to flip. One of those guys we get and then flip. He'd probably have a lot of trade value. We could probably get an elite, elite player. Um, but man, uh, Matt West didn't grow at all. Francisco McCarron didn't grow at all. Really don't like seeing that. Uh, Matt West is kind of my new hope on the blue line. But both these guys, medium top four, maybe with the new coach, uh, will look a bit better. But I mean... Guys, the team, the team down here actually looks really good. And I'm very excited to see what Jerry Corso, how he continues to develop. But really, I guess maybe I don't want to trade power. I don't want to trade Kuzmenko. I don't want to trade Paterka. 
like because Paterka is probably one of those guys that you know is going to fill in for one of the guys that leaves like if we let Lindholm leave Paterka's looking really good as an 87 we've got him signed for how many more years another season after this one at only 4.25 that's great Owen Power uh, is signed for two more years after this one at 8.3 but I just wonder is there a trade to be made where we move power plus something? Power plus, I don't, know, I don't know, anything for an upgrade on the blue line. Is there a hockey trade to be made somewhere, right? Kuzmenko and power for, nobody can probably take that. Uh, but yeah, power doesn't have that much value. Okay, I guess, listen, power can play right D. I just wish he fit with Mason Jackson, who is plateaued. Really upset that he's plateaued, too, because I thought Mason Jackson, the way he came out gangbusters, like, he started his career so freaking hot. I thought for sure, like, you know, 16 points was a minus 10, but then 19, I mean, he's been good. He's been solid every year. It's just, you'd think that he'd eventually just hit the, turn the corner, but I guess not. I mean, power on the second defensive pairing, they're all listed as top four defensemen, so it doesn't really matter who I put with who. Um... I, I think I'm going to leave Jackson up there. Power, Hannafin down for Brizgalov. Uh, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Because uh, this gets lefty. Uh, so I guess we'd have two guys playing on their off hands. But Hannafin and Baron, uh, Brizgalov and Boakfist, and then Jackson and Power. I don't love the fact that Brizgalov's there. But it does help us. Uh, plus three if he plays with Mason Jackson. Maybe we get him to develop. Who knows? Um, but I think for now, we're going to leave things the way they are. Uh, plus one up there. I don't know. This is, again, I'd love to get your guys' take on it. I may just kind of roll with it and see what happens because the all forward core is that good. Um, but really, like, do we go out and find a trade for, I don't know, I know Colorado's stack with defensemen. Uh, Colorado probably needs a little bit of a shakeup to go get Bowen Byram or Devin Taze, probably Bowen Byram, who's got seven years of 10.7 remaining. Not bad. Not great. Francisco McCarron and Lindholm. Not a bad trade. Don't think that that is that bad of a trade because then we would move, I guess. Ah, that's our second line center though. And I don't want to move to Zykov or Thompson down to the second line because they haven't shown like they earned that yet. But, you know, just that's where my mind is at. Bowen Byram, again, another lefty, but an elite two-way defenseman. Plays on the top four. Uh, he can put up points. I really just want to get an offense. I, I want a Kale McCarr. I want a guy that can can just uh, put up a ton of points. And is it Kevin Korchinski, offensive defenseman? Can we get him? It's going to take Zykov, Lindholm, Lindholm and Power. That's a lot, but again, some uh, some options there. So, I don't know. I feel like we roll with it. The team chemistry is good. It's at 73. The fans are happy at 91. Um, I'm very happy with the way the team looks. Obviously, the growth internally has been fantastic. I really don't have much to complain about, guys. But that's all the time I have for this one. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one. This is a free for all. Free for all. What we fall. This is a free for all.